Okay, everyone, welcome to this workshop. I'm going to jump into a screen share right now so we can get busy. And uh, you're, let me know, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen right about now. Okay. Yes, I can see it too. We're all good, okay. So what I see on my end is going to be a little bit different than what you see on your end for the purpose of the recording. So I just wanna cover a little bit of technical stuff just so that we have a really great experience. So this is best practices for the best experience. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the product that we're using right now, Zoom, uh, but I'm just gonna assume that you are a newbie and I just want to make sure that we get some of this stuff out of the way. So this is awesome for you. Okay, so uh, obviously, if you have the option of putting your webcam on and off, you can do so. You can hide yourself at any point. Just in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see video on or video. You can, you can toggle on or off at any point. And also, I encourage audio on. Now, I will mute everybody once we get into the actual presentation, just for the purpose of having a great solid recording. And also, if you're ever getting any type of audio issues, headsets or earbuds are a good option, just to knock out a lot of that um, potential background noise. And also, of course, we can't control the, the background noise on your end. So some things just to consider if you do have your audio on and you are engaging with the group at any point, it's a good idea to keep in mind, um, you know, family members doing dishes in the background and so on, air conditioning units and all this stuff. And whatever's in your control, I understand that certain things are not in your control, but we really want to make a great uh, recording experience. Okay, now, uh, some of the things about Zoom are, there are different ways of viewing your experience. Now, as I mentioned, what I see on my end is going to be different than what you see on your end. So don't assume that when I'm making reference to something or when you're looking at your screen that I'm seeing the same thing. So when I start going into the presentation, I'm actually going to turn my video into a mini mode, which is only going to show me. So I'm not going to be seeing you. That doesn't mean you don't have the option to see everybody. You do. You can actually keep your video gallery open and see the screen at the same time. And there you'll, you'll, if you're not familiar with the options, you can just go to Zoom and do a quick search on viewing options. But it's really cool that if you want a side-by-side -side mode, you want to stay connected with everybody, if you want your chat window open and you want your access to your Q&A and be able to toggle from windows back and forth on your screen, understand that you can do all that and you're not affecting the recording in any way on on my end. Okay, so that's that's the only limitation that I have is I'm not able to be, I'm not during the presentation able to see you. However, Maria and, and Will are here to help you in any way through chat. So we do have, we do have communication throughout, just not directly with me. Okay, there's also an option active speaker or pinned speaker. By default, the system's going to toggle between whoever is speaking. So who is that? if you're in gallery view, there will actually, that frame, video frame will actually be highlighted, whoever's speaking. If you're in active speaker view, you're actually going to see whoever's speaking on the main window. If it's distracting that it's bouncing back and forth, what I encourage you to do is just pin a video. And if you just hover over a thumbnail at any point, there's a drop down menu, it just says pin this video. Pin just means lock it, so that's the only video that you want to see on the main screen. This is great if you know that somebody's going to be speaking for a while and you just want to highlight them. Okay, this is a workshop, so which means we're going to be doing work. And along with doing work in a group is we want to have connection and engagement with the group. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to actively communicate with you during the presentation but you have everybody else that you can communicate with during the presentation. So if you think I suck, tell people I suck. If you're having audio issues, if something's happening, go ahead and, and chat with the group and just say, you know, problem. You may have a little bit of a challenge getting my attention because I'm gonna get lost in the presentation once I get started with that. Uh, but here's, this is important. The chat window that you have available is, 
is within Zoom itself. If you just go to the bottom, you'll see chat. You can open chat and you can see a list of the participants to chat with. There's private chat and there's group chat. You have those options. I also want to direct your attention to a Q&A form. So that landing page that you were directed to, hopefully that's still open. If you clicked on the link, your Zoom would have opened up into a different window. I encourage you to keep that original link open because it has a Q&A form on there. At any point, if you have a question regarding any of the material that we're covering, drop a question into that form because that gets logged into our system. Now, because of the nature of this workshop, especially in this first week, there is so much content that I'm going to cover and so much homework that I'm going to give you. I know a lot of people are going, oh, homework, flashbacks for school, but let's, let's just call it fun work, okay? So you're going to have an opportunity to take whatever we cover today and work on it all week long until the next uh, session. That probably means that you're not going to have a lot of time to get your questions answered in this particular session, but that doesn't mean you can't ask the questions. Ask the, the questions through the form, and then throughout the workshop, I'll be sure that all the questions are answered at some point, especially later on when we get more interactive and we start getting into group uh, activities where it's going to be much more engaging. So this first week is going to feel a little bit more like lecture style, Although you're, again, you're going to be doing work on your end while I'm talking. Uh, keep in mind, this is a workshop, so don't get into passive listening mode. I want you to actually doing the work as we move along. Okay, the other thing is I would encourage anybody right now in the chat to go ahead and locate your LinkedIn URL and drop your URL into chat. This is a great way for people just in chat to just click on your LinkedIn profile and find out a little more of what you do. It's also an opportunity for you to start to connect with each other on LinkedIn. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is being recorded and we will have uh, a replay available later today. And you will also have a link to download the slides. So don't feel the need to take notes at this point. We'll have everything that you need. And also we'll include a spreadsheet, which we're, we will be using throughout this entire presentation, this spreadsheet's going to be very valuable to you. So I wanna make sure that you have a copy of the template that you can use to do your work as we, uh, as we continue on. Okay, so I'm actually going to, I can see everyone right now in gallery view, I'm actually going to make my window small now so that I will only see myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spotlight my video, which means that I'm going to take control of what you see on the main screen. Actually, I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my video. That way I'm going to give you more flexibility is whose mugshot that you would actually like to look at during the thing. So if I spotlight a video that locks it on my mugshot, but just in case you're sick of uh, my face, I'll give you the option that if you want to actually look at someone else. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my video for the recording and that will, uh, that will have only my face on there. All right, so I don't see anybody now. I feel like I'm you know, a lone wolf on an island, but I'm gonna assume that you're there with me the entire time, cheering me on. Yeah, I can hear you, let's see. Can I hear you? Hello? Can you hear me? Where are you? I'm here. <laughs> okay, everybody's here, great. Okay, so um, go ahead and mute yourself now, and we'll begin with the presentation. All right, welcome everyone to the presentation on how to prepare for an online media interview. Now, this is the prepare phase of a program that Maria and I run called a VIP Media Showcase Mentorship Program. So many of our clients are on this workshop currently to prepare for phase two, which is the produce phase of our program, which is conducted in Las Vegas. And we like to offer this first prepare phase as a means of really locking down the process of how to prepare for online media interviews. And then at the live event, we will go into 
uh, actually shooting uh, on location on a red carpet, in studio, behind the scenes on various sets. So it's more of a transition process. Uh, we also have some special VIP invited guests that have joined us for the prepare phase. And if anybody is interested following the four weeks that we work together to continue to work with us on phase two and phase three, the produce and promote phase, you're welcome to talk to Maria about that. So what we're going to do each week in the prepare phase, and this is stage one planning, we're going to focus on market research. And I know probably a lot of, I don't see your faces right now, but you're probably going, oh, oh market research. Does that ever sound fun? Well, you know, it, it actually, it can, actually can be fun and it, it can be fun if we simplify it. So what we're going to cover in this program has to be simple to the point where it, where, William, are you there? Give me a, William, what do you say? How, how simple should this thing be? It must be very simple. It is to be, uh, yeah. Do you guys hear me? <laughs> do you yes, see? I do hear you. Yeah. Yeah, that's to be as uh, simple as possible. Simple as for a five-year-old. There you go. That's what I was looking for, a five-year-old. So we're going to simple as a five-year-old. Okay, so uh, if at any point you start to feel overwhelmed, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you back to that concept. I want you to just, I want you to dumb it down. I want you to sim simplify it. Because we're going to talk about a lot of numbers we're gonna look at different tools and what you're seeing on the screen is going to feel very overwhelming to you. So I just, I know I'm, I'm beating it to death right now. I just need to have you just continue to, to bear with me during this first week to say, listen, uh, this, doesn't need to, this doesn't need to be complicated and it shouldn't be complicated. So at any point you're feeling overwhelmed, I need you to speak up and chat and let people know that you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and that would be an opportunity to go in and ask some questions in Q&A to get clarification. But I'm just going to continue to reinforce the purpose of this first week and it is to keep it simple, but it, it's also to make it transformational, positively transformational. I want you to find something profound in this. So let's look at um, specifically what this all means, market research, what are our objectives? So in this stage, our media coaches, that's right now, Maria and I, are going to help you, our VIP client guests, identify your target audience, research the market potential, and confirm a hot topic. I'll say that again, a hot topic for your online media interview. And specifically, this spreadsheet that you're going to build out over the next week is going to is going to confirm your target audience, and whether this be entrepreneurs or business owners or how specific you want to be for your particular audience, your target market, this includes demographics, geographics, and psychographics. That's really just your, your uh, uh, things like location, uh, how your target market thinks, uh, their demographics, their age, uh, and so on. Target topic, now, remember, if you go back to what it says at the top, the purpose is to confirm a, heart, a hot topic. I want you to start thinking right now. If you were to go and do a media interview, whether that's online or offline, in studio or on a red carpet, whether it's three minutes or three hours, what would that topic be? And I want you to start thinking of uh, a couple of, uh, let's, a keyword phrase, let's call it. I want you to start thinking of a focus keyword phrase. So that could be business coaching, brand strategy, stress management, whatever it is. I want you to, at this point, start thinking about what that would be for you. Now, not necessarily what your expertise is, because remember, I'm asking from a different perspective. It's what would that topic be if you were to be interviewed in the media? And we'll cover this much more in detail. Okay, target influencers. These are VIPs, we call them, and you'll see the term VIP all over our sites. Very influential people. I believe that all people are important, so I don't like the term very important people, but I don't believe that all people have the same levels of influence. So we want to identify very influential people because these are the people 
that will help us with distribution once we do a media interview. And that's a powerful concept right there alone. Okay, then after we have this, after we've done this media interview or many interviews, we will have this opportunity to reach out to media platforms. And this could be blogs, industry events, online publications, and so on. And if you notice, our focus here is online interviews, which is why we're looking for things like blogs, online events, online publications first. But that doesn't mean we can't take this offline. We absolutely can. And finally, we want to look at target products and services. That's things like books and courses and coaching because here's the thing, if we, if we absolutely know what products and services our market are interested in, then these could be the offers, the call to actions at the end of our media interviews. And we wanna give the people what they want. So on that note, let's look at, um, let me jump ahead one slide because I think all of you are already familiar with us. So uh, I'll just mention this quickly. We have a site at authorityshowcase.com where our focus of that site is showcasing entrepreneurs and small business owners as leading authorities and credible experts in their industries. And we also have vipshowcase.com which forwards to this site. So. I think you've all seen our site, so I don't need to go in and tell you what, all about what we do and all that kind of stuff. Many of you we've worked with, we are working with. So, But I want to direct your attention to a key concept. One is we have a specific authority site. And secondly, we have a couple of other sites which serve a little bit of a different purpose. In our case, they're media sites. So we have vegasnetmedia.com which the focus of that site is connecting the world to Las Vegas and Las Vegas to the world. And here we have a show called The Strip Live. That's our celebrity talk show where we have an opportunity to interview some of the world's most successful and influential celebrities, entrepreneurs, industry experts. And if you go to those sites, you can navigate through and you can see all the various uh, interviews that we've done over the past 10 years. Okay. Uh, because that site was very focused on Las Vegas, we decided to create another site called VIP Net Media, again, very influential people, and created a separate show called Mastercast Live, which is also a celebrity talk show, but it has more global appeal. So here's where we're conducting interviews with celebrities, entrepreneurs, industry experts, focusing on the concept of success. In other words, we're looking to showcase their success or to or we're looking for success stories like people who've overcome adversity and uh, people who have, uh, you know, I love that story. Everybody loves that underdog story where, you know, you were at one point living in a chicken coop and suddenly you're, you're living in a mansion. So we, we capture those inspirational, motivational stories there. And the point I wanna make here is number one, is I'm trying to impress you, <laughs> of course, uh, but, Secondly, and I, I joke about that, but we all as authorities are all looking to influence and impress our target market. So, which brings me to the point of why you should have an authority site. Many of us build websites, but we, our, our websites don't often do the best at branding us as an authority. So having an authority site, and I call it a site, but it could be one page, it simply could be a one page website, but having an authority site is extremely important before you reach out to media outlets for the purpose of getting interviewed on their show, or if you're reaching out to an online publication for the purpose of having them publish your interview, they are always want, going to want to know who are you and what have you done. Uh, if you don't have a good authority site and you don't have a good interview under your belt, you're going to get a lot of no's. I'm just going to tell you that from experience. But if you have a great authority site and you have at least one solid interview that shows that you can be a stellar interview guest, you're going to get a lot of yeses. So the point I want you to take from this particular slide is... I want you to think about your authority site. Do you, have a, do you have a link at the top 
of your menu that clicks to a media page, because that's also very important, a place to hub all of your interviews, all of your outlets that have showcased you at any point in time. Because again, when before you're reaching out to a media outlet, you want to have this, this presence. I call it curb appeal. You know, just like when, well, when a, a realtor is, uh, is showing a home, uh, if your front lawn is all a mess and the paint's peeling, but the house inside is beautiful, it doesn't matter because people are not going to go inside. So we have to make sure that we have great curb appeal before we're going to reach out to some of these powerful media outlets. Okay, let's carry on. If you don't get anything of value from this workshop, which I know you absolutely will, this is one concept, this is a key insight that could actually transform your life and your business right now. And I'm speaking from experience. A number of years ago, I had an opportunity to participate in a course by um, Ryan Dice, and it was called Info Product Mastery. And one of the things that Ryan taught in that course was the proper way to create an info product. And here's what he said most people, he said 90 plus percent of the people get this wrong. He said what people often do is they ask, what topic should I create my product on? Now think about that. That's what I know that's what most of us do. What topic should I create my product on? So if you're a stress management expert, you automatically will think, well, I should create my, pro my product on the topic of stress management. And often people will write entire books based on their passions. Now, I am absolutely, I believe that passion is important in pursuing any endeavor, but it is, but it is not necessary for success. It certainly helps with success, but it's not necessary. Because one of the things that Ryan mentioned was you could be passionate about underwater basket weaving, and you can write a book on it, and you can develop online courses, and you can speak on the topic. But the problem is there is no market for online basket, I mean, underwater basket weaving. There's just no market for it. It doesn't exist. So I almost fell off my chair when I learned that concept because it radically changed the way I did business, the way I created product. And, and now it changes the way I actually do interviews and prepare for interviews. So instead of asking what topic should I prepare my message on, so remember those key words like I, I suggested that you start thinking about whether it's stress management or business coaching or public speaking or whatever it is that you're thinking about uh, sharing with in a media interview, I want you to kind of reverse engineer it a little bit. Just switch it around. Instead of asking what topic should I prepare my message on, I want you to ask this powerful question. What audience or market should I prepare my message for? Because what happens here, just by doing this, is once you I can identify a hungry audience and a market that actually wants, they're hungry, they're starving for this information, then all you have to do is prepare a message around that information. So I'm hoping right now that you're all squirming in your seats. If that is a new concept for you, that will be transformational. If it's something that you already are intimately familiar with, great. You're on the right path. Keep doing what you're doing. But before you go out and write that book because you're so passionate about it, take some time to do market research to find out, is there actually a market for my book? Because when you get that, it's almost a guarantee that whatever you're creating on the other end is going to fly. It's going to go viral. It's going to move. It's going to sell. You're going to get distribution. So I need you to get this, this concept right now. Before you go out and start preparing the, all of the ins and outs of your media message, ask yourself, what audience or market should I prepare my message for? Now, imagine that you have that messaging all down right now. You know, you have your hungry market, you know who your audience is, you have a hot topic. Then the next part is to ask the question, whom or what influencer should I connect with to help serve that market? The reason why this is so powerful is, is because the first part is content, the second part is distribution. 
I mean, oh my word, if you can create content that the market wants, which includes the market includes your influencers, then your influencers are going to want to share that content with their hungry market. Again, because they know their they know their audience and they understand that there's a need for it, and you happen to be the one that provides that information. This information could come in a form that of an interview that you've already done, or when you reach out to the influencer, they might identify you as the expert and say, "Well, I would like to interview you on my platform because you're an authority." Remember, they've gone to your authority site, they have taken a look at your sample media interview and they're impressed and presto you're now a guest on a top influencers platform show whether that be a webcast a live cast a webinar a video conference and it could also extend from online to hey an influencer might say wow i really like what you're doing online i love the interview that you did for me hey would you be interested in speaking on my stage at my live event. Okay, so you can see how this can grow into some other cool things. Okay, so let's get to work. Here's where I, where I introduce you to a spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, there are going to be these 10 columns. And you can just read them here. And we're targeting audience, market, topics, authority sites, influencers, blogs, and on, on and on. This is all the research that we're going to be doing in this workshop and let me go ahead and toggle over to show you what this spreadsheet looks like. I will just open up okay so I'm going to let's just find uh or I thought this was open already but here it is. We'll find it. There it is. I think it's right in here. All right, right. There it is. Okay, so the template that we you, we will send you after, uh, once you get the replay, is research data template. Now, look, when I open this up, they, these are the 10 columns across. And, okay, remember I said, this uh, this is going to start, this could feel overwhelming to you a little later as we start entering the data. Don't feel the need that you have to fill up all these cells. Don't feel that these rows need to go like 200 deep. They don't. Like William had mentioned previously, I like his comment that says, if you can even add one key piece of information in each one of these columns, you are doing more than your competition is doing in the form of market research. So here's the thing. If you could just start uh, participating in the workshop by starting to add some of this information as we go along, you then can build it out. What I encourage you and what I, I challenge everyone to do is before next week, if you can have this so you can have at least one page filled, so in approximately 25 rows of information, in all of these columns, that would be awesome. That And that would be all you would ever need to transform your business. And again, if you would just wanna to continue to add and build research, this is a work in progress. So this is a template that you're always going in and editing and changing and, and scrutinizing. So because the market changes all the time, this information will change over time. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. And let's now start entering some of this data. We're gonna go through all these 10 areas. We'll start with the target audience, and I will have specific action steps in each one of these slides. So again, we don't have the time because we're gonna blow through this information very quickly, but again, you'll have the replay if you need to go back to refresh your memory. But all I want you to do right now is have a window open, especially have, have Google uh, open Google search open so that you could quickly participate as we go along so toggle back and forth between windows as you see fit but I want to make sure that again don't be a passive participant at this point follow the instruction as we go along and again this is going to be something that you can take away and continue 
to uh, apply. Learn it once and you can apply it from this point on. Okay, so the target audience, I, uh, the action step here is identify a hot art audience that you would like to serve and list some of the top influencers now again, the terms that we're going to use will toggle between terms like influencers or experts or authorities or celebrities, all means the same thing. These are the movers and shakers of your market. So in, in our market, Marie and I actually target celebrities, entrepreneurs, and industry experts. And this includes authors, speakers, seminars, leaders, trainers, business owners, coaches, consultants, authors, and entertainers, music and film, producers and professional service providers along with some other industry experts. So at this point, if you have a notepad, start recording just whatever comes to mind right now. Who is your hot art audience? Who would you like to serve? And maybe some of the top influencers that you would think of that just pop into your mind. Okay, again, we're gonna go quickly here, so follow along. So the action step, for the target market is, remember, we want to identify a hot market. So again, even before we're thinking about hot topic, we're thinking hot market. What market for your target audience, at, and here we're actually going to get, we're gonna actually use evidence. Focus keyword phrases is, is the term that you're gonna hear throughout this workshop. Focus keyword phrase is a term that I like to use because it reminds me that we're, we are focusing on something very specific. Many of us are overwhelmed nowadays and this online research that we're going to do is not going to help with that. It's going to make us feel even more overwhelmed, which is why I dwelled in the beginning that we have to focus on simplicity and we have to focus on the task at hand. So I'll, dr I'll drive that into your head that we need to be laser focused, laser targeted. That's why we have this little target on all of our slides with VIP in the middle, reminding us that we're not only looking to become very influential people, that we're actually seeking out alliances with very influential people. So this term keyword phrase comes from the world of SEO, search engine optimization. And if you're, you're going to see some of the languaging and some of the tools that we use that may use terms like main or primary keyword or root keyword or core keyword. If you see any of that languaging, it just keep it, bring it back to focus keyword phrase. And your focus keyword phrase at this point would be tied in with your topic. So again, I want you to start thinking about what would be that topic that you would share your message on in the in the event of a media interview. So examples of focus keyword phrases, I don't know, uh, it's going to vary depending on what industry you're in, but here's some, marketing strategy, Facebook marketing, brand consulting, public speaking, video marketing, and the list goes on. So whatever niche or whatever industry that you're in and whatever area that you would like to share, whatever your message is that you would like to share with the media, start thinking about what would my focus keyword phrase B. Now this is generally a two to three word max phrase. You don't want to go too long yet. We'll do that later. But for now, this is a, a shorter term. It's usually two to three words are ideal. One word is probably too general for search. Like if I just use the word marketing, that's just going to be way too general. And if I use the term speaking, that would be way too general. So we want to start getting a little more specific. And the tools that we're going to introduce that's going to help really get clear on our hungry market are listed here, the Google search tool. And this is just google.com where you are going to do a lot of searching. And then we have a couple of suggest tools. Now, if you ever go in into Google and you start typing in to the search box, you'll see a drop down list of, it's actually Google's trying to guess what you're searching for. And those, those are called suggest tools. So that's a suggest tool and it's, it's, it's providing suggestions of searches. And this is a powerful tool because you gotta think about if, it's, if Google's trying to provide suggestions, this is based on what other people have typed into the search box. So you gotta think if other people are typing things in search boxes, there potentially could be a market for it. The, the more people are typing in a certain thing, uh, the more interest is, is 
uh, the more the market is showing interest in, and the more these tools like Uber suggest and Yoast suggest are actually going to record that and show analytics and metrics to indicate which ones are more popular. So again, we're looking to identify a target market here. We could also go to Google Trends tool. Remember, markets change all the time. So what was hot yesterday is dead. It could be dead today. So if you go to google.com slash trends, you could actually see what's declining, what's escalating, what's spiking at any point in time. So if you're doing a media interview, you can actually target your media interviews which, which to something which is actually hot at the very moment. And Google Trends tool will help with that. There's also a couple of tools that are specifically for keywords. That's uh, keywords, keywordtool.io and keywords everywhere tool. Now, Keywords Everywhere tool is a Chrome extension, so you'll actually need to install that. There's a little bit of setup required. It's not complicated, but it's, again, uh, something simple to use and uh, very effective in helping us determine our target market. Now, I will say that all the tools that I'm using are free tools, and they're not necessarily the best on the market because there are paid tools that uh, if you're doing paid advertising, pay per click, anything like that, you probably uh, could benefit from actually going into some of the paid services. But for our purpose, you absolutely do not need to do anything paid. This is, these are all free tools that are powerful enough to do the work for us. Okay, let's now look at, uh, but okay, before I jump ahead, at this point, I, you should be starting to think about who that hungry market is. You should, uh, maybe you don't have evidence yet, but at least you're, you're getting some insight as to who that, that market is. The searches that we do are going to confirm that. Okay, target topic. Here's where we're going to build a list of long tail keywords using a tool that compiles the suggest terms. Now, let's go ahead and get busy by doing that right now. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use this keyword tool, Uber suggest and Yoast suggest, and I'm going to just take uh, a keyword phrase as a sample. And again, you're going to do this while I do it, but with your keyword. So let's go ahead and open up keyword tool. And that is right here. And I'm gonna try the search term, I don't know, let's say business coaching. Okay, now just by putting in that term, I could actually select by country and language and look across the top, the title bar options I have, the tabs. So I can actually search this term through Google, YouTube, Bing, Amazon, eBay, or an app store. So I'm gonna start with just a Google search. And if I click down this menu, I can select specifically what type of search, all images, news, or videos. So I'm just gonna do all right now. And look at what's happening here. It's taking the term business coaching, which was our primary keyword phrase, and it's creating what's called a long tail keyword phrase. Now you don't need to know the origin of that term. Just think of it as they are adding an additional string of search terms that people are interested in. So in this case, we started with business coaching. It's now showing business coaching certification, business coaching fees. And look, we can scroll all the way down and see all these different options potentially for hot topics. But look here, we also have a column search volume and CPC. Now those are grayed out because they're not offering that for the free service, so you need to upgrade for the paid service. But let's, uh, let's check out another tool. I'll show you a way to get around that. Let's take our search term. And let's go over to a tool called Uber Suggest. So I'm going to check, I'm going to try that term, business coaching here. I want to again make sure the drop-down menu is selected appropriately. I'll select web and I want to make sure the location is here, English United States, and I'll click look up. Okay, so what I'm going to receive here now is another list of long tail keywords. 
And what this is doing is it's helping me just explore some possible topics for my media interview. So I started off saying, well, I'm interested in speaking about something about business coaching, but let's look at some options here. So here, are business coaches worth the money? That could be a topic for an interview. Uh, okay, continue to scroll down here, see if I can find some longer keyword phrases. Okay, here's one, business coach for health coaches. Okay, look at this search, business coach for women. Now, look, check the numbers in the columns, 140 versus 10. Look, this is right here in the search volume. I could actually toggle the search volume to show a number of search terms by popularity. So this is search volume over the last month. And then there's a column that says CPC, cost per click. This is what people are paying for advertising. Now think about it. If somebody's paying $7.22 per click, do you think that there would be a market for business coaching for the topic? Yeah, so this takes the guesswork out of it. We can simply use a tool like this to confirm that we have a hot topic in, but prior to us going out and preparing all the messaging for our media interview. Okay, and then we have Yoast tool, same thing, business coaching, select our language, English, and this does it in a little bit of a different fashion, but it's kind of cool. It actually starts to explore search terms by alphabetical letters. So look, business coaching agreement template, business coaching and mentoring for dummies, Okay, so again, this is just right now, one, if you're doing this on your own right now, your brain should be exploding with ideas. You should be getting all kinds of possible ideas for your media interview. Okay, let's bounce back to our presentation and we'll continue on. Uh, before, I, before I jump forward, something that you could do to even make this more specific is you could start to add additional search terms to your keyword phrase. So if I wanna go business coaching author, business coaching coach, well, that's kind of weird, but business uh, phrase, expert business, I mean business, <laughs> business phrase. Oh my God, I gotta slow down. Business, uh, business coach interview and so on. I think you get the idea. You can explore with different keyword phrases and getting and get different search results as you progress through. Okay, if you're doing this on your own, you should have a lot of target, potential target topics that are hot right now. And we're gonna do something else, which is also very powerful. We're going to look at some potential authority sites. Now remember in the beginning I said, it's important to have an authority site. Well, some of the top experts in the world have authority sites. And if we were to go to their sites, there is a gold mine of information available to us there, not to mention things like uh, contact information, uh, also knowledge of what books and products and topics that they are currently uh, putting out there. So let me ask you this, if somebody's at the top of their game, They've, they've written books, they're doing coaching programs, they're speaking on stages, and they're at the top of their game, meaning they're at the top of Google search, they're an industry notable. Does it make sense that they are there for the reason that they have been doing some things right? Okay, so here, this is a concept of modeling. If you can go to these top authority sites and see what the others are doing, in other words, what media interviews are they doing? What topics are they speaking on? What books are they writing on? This could be an absolute breakthrough for you. If you can see what the others are doing, model the greats, and just simply borrow some of the topics that they have already market proven. Okay, I hope you get that because that's powerful right there. Uh, but here, here's the challenge. How do you know when somebody has that kind of authority? If you have a list of authority sites, how do you know uh, who, is, who has more authority than others? Well, 
First of all, I have to say that just because somebody has a high ranking online doesn't mean that they have higher influence or authority than others. So the focus of this workshop, because it's online, we're only using online tools for the purpose of determining authority for people that are online. However, there are many people that are not online that are best-selling authors that are traveling the world speaking on stages. So don't discount those people. There are people that you could partner with that are absolutely not going to show authority online. So I'm using the term in such a way right now, authority, to show online authority. Okay. A uh, couple ways of determining whether a site has authority is to use Google search tool. And we're going to, uh, we're going to use the tabs at the top. You'll see that if you go to Google search tool, there's a number of tabs, this is images, video, shopping, news, books, uh, and so on, apps. But I could actually take my primary keyword tool, or my, my primary keyword phrase, search it in Google, and determine the authority of some of these sites to locate them. So let me do that now. Let's go over to Google. And I'm going to search again. Uh, let's try business coaching again. So here is where you're going to just follow along with me with your primary keyword phrase. Now, I want to emphasize the importance right now of not wanting to go and go down. I call it go down the rabbit hole. This is what everybody does, and I have to just stop you and encourage you not to do it. You can do it later. Go down the rabbit hole later. But I often say, uh, if you go down the rap rabbit hole, there's going to be times you need to come back up to the surface. So I'm going to call page one of Google search the surface. We don't want to click on anything right now because you're going to see something cool and you go, oh, my God, huh? 20 best business coaches in Nevada. Wow, I'm going to click on that. No, don't do that yet. <laughs> I'll give you an ample opportunity to do that later. The reason I don't want you to go down the rabbit hole is because the internet can be very distracting. Once you start doing searches, let's say you go to a speaker site and all of a sudden you see that they have an event and it's an event coming to Las Vegas. And although you're in the process right now of wanting to identify authority sites, you see this event link, you click on it and you go, oh, look at the list of event speakers. And in there you see, hey, I know, I know one of those speakers. And you click on their link, which takes them to your website. Look, gone. you're gone. You're, you, you're, you're down the rabbit hole. So you're now distracted and you've lost focus. So what I want to encourage you to do is stay on the surface right now. All we're doing right now is, is identifying some potential authority sites that are showing up on the first page of Google. Do not even navigate to additional pages. Don't go to page two. And here's why. You don't ever need to go to page two to partner with some of the biggest names in the world. You don't. Because here's the thing. Why are people on page one of Google? How did they get there in, through a search? Why, why would a person or a company be listed on page one of Google for the term, for the search term what they're using? Simple. Because they're the biggest authorities on it online. They've established themselves. Whatever they're doing is working. So those are the people that we want to reach out to when it's time to get interviewed or it's time to get on a stage or it's time to create a media alliance with somebody or a partnership of some sort. This is where you want to compile your data. But I also want to show you the power of identifying authority sites just simply by clicking through these tabs across the top. So if we go, okay, uh, if I click on news, I immediately get some authority sites that are actually publishing news. Like, hello, if people are interested in news, could they possibly be interviewed in interviewing experts or authorities on subjects? They're probably doing interviews, so that's cool. Uh, images, just by clicking on images can often give you just from like by opening up an image, you will have a direct URL back to the main website. So this is a good visual display quickly of saying, well, who, who's doing what? Who are the movers and shakers? I see Action Coach. No question in my mind that Action Coach would be a good influencer, a good partnership. Uh, I also am going to click on books. 
who writes books, especially books that are showing up on the first page of a Google search? Authorities. Yeah, authorities that you would want to interview or authorities that you would want to be interviewed by. Okay, and then we can continue on down the line. Videos, often you're going to get high traffic YouTube videos here. We'll talk about YouTube more later on. But this is powerful because this information, again, tells you right away that if there's a video showing up, that video probably has a lot of traffic. If it's a YouTube video, it's probably got a channel which, with a lot of subscribers. Again, a channel with a lot of subscribers could possibly a be a platform where you would be a guest on somebody's YouTube platform. It could be a place for you just to share your interview. It might be something that they're interested in, in publishing to their site. So again, this is all real key data to identify top authority sites. Now, not necessarily blogs. There's a lot of powerful authority site blogs. I'm, I'm thinking more of along the lines of an authority site, somebody's main website. This would be a place to identify somebody's main site. A lot of authorities will have a main website and then have a whole bunch of other sites. Like I just showed you, we have a main site, authorityshowcase.com, and we have other sites. So the authority site that I would be looking for, for, for Maria and I would be authorityshowcase.com. So that's kind of the site that you're wanting to target when you're, um, when you start clicking on all of these various links. Of course, then you have, you click the more button. Um, there's nothing really here that I would want to go any further. Map, shopping, flights, or finance. That's not going to be real helpful for me, but definitely these tabs that are showing right across the top are very helpful. Okay. Again, if you're with me, which I hope you are following along, continue to continue to search. Now there is a tool called Open SEO Stats Chrome extension. You'll need to download this if you're using Chrome. I'm not going to go in here because it's overwhelming. It looks highly technical, but it actually can be used very effectively. If you know how to use it, all you simply do is take any page URL and enter that into the, the app. The app will immediately show you a page rank and on a number of different search platforms. So this is a this is a tool that you can use if you're wondering which uh, which tool is or which uh, site is the most influential in comparison to another. So so what we've seen here is in this in this section is we're looking at relevance. Remember, you know, this is often search volume, competition, like who's paying to get listed, and a way of determining page rank. All right, next. This is my, I know Maria and I get most excited about this because we're in the business of interviewing the top influencers in the world. So it's important for us that we know who those influencers are and what they're doing at any point in time. So we wanna be able to follow those top people. So the action step here is to research and list the top VIPs in your market and these, again, we use different terms, but authorities, celebrities, experts, influencers, and any other term that you want to use to the, the people that are actually, and I want you to think of it from a media perspective now, people that you would like to interview for your platform or people that you would like to be interviewed on their platform. And there's a third component people that would be interested in distributing your content. So if you did an online interview, like if you're part of our mentorship program, which many of you are that are on today, you know that what we do is we take you, or when you're in Las Vegas, we take you and we, and we produce a professional interview that's designed to showcase you as an as an authority as an as an influencer and we do that on the red carpet because people automatically associate red carpet as wow if you're on a red carpet you must be a somebody but what we do in addition to that is we surround you with a-list celebrities so we make sure that where your video gets published on our website is is surrounded by people like richard branson tony bennett stevie wonder Kim Kardashian, the list goes on. And these, we've interviewed hundreds of these, these really well-known celebrities and we can then take those 
celebrities and place them on the same website as you so that when you're reaching out to a media outlet, they immediately, they don't know who you are, but when they go to the video, they see you on a red carpet and they immediately see all these other celebrities, especially when they go to our website and they see taglines like showcasing some of the world's most successful and influential people. You become famous by association. Now, if you're not part of our mentorship program, this doesn't mean that you can't do that. You absolutely want to do that on your own authority page. You want to make sure that you have a media page that showcases your interviews, but also put all the other influencers on that page. So this could be testimonials from other influencers. These could be influencers that you've interviewed in the past. Anything that will sit on that page so when somebody looks at it, you have immediate curb appeal, and they, for at that point, they just go, I don't know who you are, but I definitely want to engage in a conversation with you because of what I see. Okay, so the tools that we're going to use here on how to identify the top target influencers in our market, we start again with Google search. And then we're going to use a number of other ones, and I'm going to break these down individually. Online book publishers, Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. We're going to look at email campaigns, what we can actually do with a marketing campaign or a list, when we get on a list of, uh, of an influencer. Then there are uh, a number of apps on the market that are called blogger outreach apps or tools. And this, these are tools generally to be able to locate top bloggers by niche location. We also can notice what kind of traffic uh, they have, uh, where they're communicating on social, we we'll often have access to their contact information. So these are very powerful tools when we later want to reach out to bloggers for the purpose of carrying our content or actually having us as guest contributors even as an option or being interviewed by them and so on. Then of course we talked about uh, YouTube we're also going to introduce you to Vimeo, video sharing sites that we can, all for the purpose of identifying the top influencers. Okay, so now we're gonna chunk this down individually. The action step here to locate influencers using the Google search tool is to actually take a search term, a very specific search term. I'm just going to copy this right now, this search term right here, top, topic blogs and notice i could also search by top topic websites top topic forums you can do this on your own later on but i'm just going to show you how this works so if i go to google now and i do top topic search let's go back here and my topic is actually my focus keyword phrase. So again, I'll just use business coaching. And look what I can see. Oh, I'm still in videos. Let's make sure we go back to all. That's key. And look what's showing up on page one of Google. Right away, I got a listing. Top 10 business coaching blogs online. Top 100 business coaching websites. Hey, uh, are you going down the rabbit hole? Are you going down the rabbit hole? Do not click on those links. I know many of you are going to say, oh my God, there's a top list. There's a top 10. There's a top 25. There's a top 100. There's a top 50. I know whatever it is you're searching, likely somebody has created a top list. Do not click on that yet. You're going to go down the rabbit hole. I need you to understand that uh, if you did come back to the surface, this is a gold mine because these top lists, that's why we're using the term top and blogs are showing us that some influencer out there has identified a list of other influencers and they compiled it and they did all the research for us. So we don't even have to, I mean, if you don't want to go any further than this, you're, you're going to, you have everything you need. You can build your list out. You can go to your spreadsheet right now and you can build out your list literally in five minutes, just based on clicking on one of these links. Okay, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to explore it. I want you to go deeper down the rabbit hole later, but right now we're at the surface. And 
let's now just watch what happens if I just change the language slightly. Forums, top business coaches, forums. Forums are a place that these authorities, these influencers communicate. There's a place where they're, they're bonding with each other. So if you want to go and reach some of these people, you could go to their forums. This could be a place that uh, could be very valuable for you. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue on with another search. Okay, let's try this one. I'm just gonna do this search. Top topic on Twitter. So this is our, um, this is our search where we can actually see who are the top influencers on places like Twitter, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, YouTube. So you can just switch this out to whatever platform that you want to locate those top influencers on. And I will do that for Twitter. Let's do, uh, let's do business coaching again. Brace yourself, this is exciting too, look. Top 20 women entrepreneurs to follow on Twitter. Is that valuable if you're uh, an expert wanting to be interviewed on somebody's platform or showcased on their platform? Now remember the platform could be social media. It could be a webcast, could be a live cast. It could be simply a one-on-one -on -one interview. It could be an online, it could be a video conference that somebody, an expert just simply wants to interview you and record it as a product, be a partnership where you're teaming up with somebody for the purpose of just creating a product. Now, we're using Zoom right now. You, that's all you need. Right now, just what you're doing with Zoom, you could actually connect with any one of these influencers and do something online right away. So I'm hoping that you're super excited about that because that is, that is very powerful. Look, just top 20, top 50 productivity experts, top 10 leadership experts on Twitter. It's targeting Twitter and it's targeting influencers. Okay, let's uh, continue on. Here's another search term designed specifically for the purpose of identifying target influencers. Now this time we're gonna go topic, we're gonna add our topic to event speakers. So, our topic in this case, again, if you're following along, it's your primary keyword phrase. I'll just go business coaching again. Now, and we usually wanna scroll past these ads. You'll see the first few listings are ads. We kinda of wanna stay away from those in most cases, but we get to these because these are the organic searches. These are paid. So people have paid to be positioned here. So we want to go here, organic. Look, we got Executive Coaching, Big Speak, Motivational Speakers Bureau. There's a Jane Atkinson speaker launcher, event speakers, business coaching for entrepreneurs. What we're looking for here is specifically for people that have events or are speaking at events. If you can locate an event, an online event, now, this could also be extremely valuable if you can just locate one online event in the area of your, that hungry market, and you have that hot topic, and you see a link that says speakers or uh, faculty. Oh my word, first locate the event page and then click on that link. There might be a list of 20 speakers. Uh, they could be online speakers or it could be on location but they have a list of the speakers. Now, ask yourself, if this is a well-known reputable event and it is very niched to a specific authority industry, doesn't it make sense that the people that they've invited to share their platform are influencers? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's powerful because you can often build your influencer list just by going to that one link that one event and somebody's created this list. And here's the thing that's very powerful. It's the power of community. Once you reach out to, let's say there's 20 people on the list. Once you've reached out to one person and you connect with them and you build a relationship, that person could now be a warm market referral to the rest of the speakers on that list. Maria and I do it all the time. It works, it's powerful. 
man, if you get this, if you're just tapping in, warm up one person, always warm up one person in a community. And when that person knows, likes, and trusts you to do business with, they're more likely to pave the way and make an introduction to another person at that event. Maria will often reach out to one person at an event, and as a result of that reach, we, we end up getting connected to a decision maker. The decision maker invites us to their event, and next thing you know, we're running a red carpet at their event, interviewing all of their influencers on the red carpet. Extremely powerful search. Okay, so that's it for that. Let's uh, continue on with influencers. Um, what you could do at amazon.com, you look at the actual search string here is if you go to books, Amazon or advanced search, and then go sort results by best selling. And then you could click on the author link to le learn more about the author. So we could do this at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And again, we're using online book publishers. Why? Because the concept here is the best selling book authors are also VIPs. They're well-established authorities. These are people that we're gonna to wanna to reach out to. So Amazon and Barnes and Noble have taken all the guesswork out of it as to who the influencers are, who the top selling or best-selling authors are, and we have that information readily available to us. So let me show you what that looks like over at Amazon. Okay, just need to locate. Where do I have? I have Amazon here somewhere. Just one moment, bear with me. Oh, I'm in the wrong window, that's why. Okay, there we go. Amazon. Now, uh, so what I wanna do here is first of all, I'm just gonna go to the departments and go to, actually, let me go to all and go to books. That takes me to a book search. Okay, now I'm seeing, I'm seeing all these books right here, but that's, that's pretty general right now. I want to actually go to advanced search. Now in advanced search, I'm simply going to apply my keyword, business coaching, and I could set the conditions that I want here for the search, but really what I want to do is go right down to the bottom here where it says sort results. So it's sort results by, here's my options, relevance, best selling. I want to sort by best selling. Because look, what comes right up. Oh, how to make stuff happen is a best selling book in that area. So again, right here, look, all these books that are best sellers have been written by authors that are influencers that we're going to want to add to our list that later we're going to want to reach out and create an alliance with of some sort. Okay, we can do the same thing with Barnes and Noble. And here we just search again our primary keyword phrase, business coaching search. And here we have somewhere there is a sort by, there it is, sort by bestsellers. Boom, and we get our list, bestsellers list. All right, I think you get the picture. That's extremely, extremely powerful. Let me move all these pictures out of the way, go back to our presentation. Good, extremely powerful place to gain insight as to some top authorities that have published books. Okay, email campaigns. Well, this is short and sweet. If you know, uh, if you're on a list on a on an email list of a influencer, you'll often get these sales, uh, these emails pub, uh, promoting an upcoming event or a, a, a product launch or a, a webinar. And a lot of times, you know, we get our inboxes get bombarded by these, and we don't pay a whole lot of attention to them because you know people are trying to sell me stuff. I want you to change your philosophy at this point. Instead of thinking like, yeah, I don't want to click on these because people are trying to sell me stuff. I want you to think about getting on as many of the lists provided by your top influencers as possible because, uh, th th I mean, this right now 
is going to give you direct access to what is currently hot on the market. Think about it. If somebody is publishing, uh, is promoting their webcast, doesn't it make sense, especially if they're interviewing somebody else on their webcast, that potentially you could be a guest on that webcast? So when you're, when you're checking your inbox and you're getting all these marketers, these influencers trying to sell you stuff, always think of it, look at it from the perspective of, is there a way that I could partner with them and provide value to them? Is there any way possibly that I can reach out and connect to provide value to them for the purpose of showcasing yourself in their media platform? Okay, I think you get the idea on that. Let's continue. There is a tool called Write Relevance, and I don't think I have that open, but let me that open that for you. And this is a place where you can search bloggers by niche, location, language, and so on. So if you just go to writerelevance.com, I don't even think you need to register for this, but it is really, really powerful. Okay, business, coaching, I'm doing a search on. And if you go to this tool, you will see that not only do you see a list of top articles, you know, these articles are likely coming from online publications, blogs, they could be webcasts, they uh, are definitely from influencers because they're showing up here on the page. But notice I can actually sort by relevance and time. I can also sort by videos only. But the one I really like is this next tab. If you click on influencers, look, I have all the influencers listed here. These are the top bloggers on the market based on my search term. And they have analytics on each of these. And you can actually follow these people directly on Twitter. That is exciting. Now there are many tools like this. They're called blogger outreach tools, but this one is free and you don't really need to go to the paid based on you know, what I showed you. This is, extremely, uh, this is extremely powerful and effective. Okay, continuing on, I just need to take a little bit of a water break. Excuse me. Okay, continuing on. Target influencers looking specifically at video sharing sites. Now, YouTube and Vimeo are probably the only ones you ever need to go to for the purpose of search, simply as YouTube has majority of the traffic. But here, I want you to search your focus keyword phrase. And specifically, I want you to look at view count or relevance. And then you can actually check out who the author is. And you can see things like number of followers and video views. So let's do that now. We're going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to search again whatever your primary keyword phrase is, go ahead and enter that into YouTube. You're going to get a number of results showing up, but I actually want you to go to the filter button, click on that, and here's where you can filter by view count and rating. So view count is very powerful because think about it, uh, does it make sense if somebody's showing up on the first page of a YouTube search, based on view count that they're an influencer, they're doing something right, or in the very least, their topic is hot. If you wanna know where a hot topic is, right here, like just search. And later, next week, we're gonna talk about getting your titles down. You could do this great interview, have it amazing, but if you put a title that has, is not targeted, if, it, if the title does not compel people to click on it, you've wasted your time, all the other work is irrelevant. You need to get people to actually click on your content. So how do you know what a great title is? Well, we'll cover that next week. But one of the things you can do very quickly is just see what other titles people are using at YouTube and model that because they've proven it. It's tested. Okay. Okay. I won't go over to Vimeo. You can do the same thing there. It's uh, same. You want to see... Uh, check out Vimeo and do a search and find out relevance and view count. Okay, uh, the last tool I'm not going to demonstrate, you'll need to do this on your own because there's a little bit of setup. 
Well, actually, it can demonstrate. I can't get you to demonstrate on your end, though. But I can show you what it looks like. The Keywords Everywhere tool is really cool when you can take a string of people. I'll just grab a couple of names here from this example, and I'll show you what the tool looks like. The Keywords Everywhere tool <clears throat> is a Chrome extension, and I just click on this little K at the top to open it up, and I'll click Bulk Keywords. Now, look what, if I just enter a bunch of names on here, comma separated, and I go Get Metrics, it actually gives me the search volume of all those names, along with the CPC and competition listings, all right here. Now, take this with a grain of salt. This is online. This doesn't necessarily mean that Tony Robbins is that much more influential than Les Brown or Brian Tracy or Bob Proctor, but you can see the search of Tony Robbins is definitely the highest. If you just have a, if you're trying to determine the ranking of a number of different influencers, and you want to determine their online authority, this is a tool that you can quickly do that to see some of those analytics. Okay, that's all I need to say on, on this on the search tool. Hey, Ray, can yes? I um, ask you a question here? Sure. Okay, so um, I've got a couple of people who need to jump off, but they uh, one question that's come up uh, is how do you work with influencers who are seemingly your competition? So if you're a business coach, and they have the same target market, but they also are providing the same service. How do you get to work with those or create alliances with those people? Okay, please uh, place that question in q and I did. Okay, great. Well, we'll cover that next session. Okay. If you have any questions regarding this, we're gonna cover that next week because I'm actually going to incorporate that when we start to look in the preparation stage of the messaging. Okay, because that we need to consider that when we create our messaging is what's you know what's in it for them. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, let's uh, go back to where were we? Okay, uh, I I think I covered this one in great detail. Target blogs. You can also so. You can also use the Write Relevance tool, as I mentioned, to find blogs, and I already showed you how to locate that in the search tool. But here, again, this is the, blogs are amazing. Listen, I need, to, I need to tell you this, and this is why I have this slide separate, is I need to tell you this, that blogs are seriously po powerful online for the purpose of gaining authority for you. Blogs and any type of online Magazines, publications are powerful. Sure, we can go do the network interviews, we can go in studio, we can do all that. But if you're actually wanting to get people to buy your products, get to your websites, check you out, and have, have a more, more of their undivided attention, blogs are the way to go. Blogs, podcasts, and online publications. I need you to think, th start thinking about those three because that will be very effective as we move forward. Okay, uh, the other thing, as I mentioned previously, is industry events. You can use the Google search tool to locate events, as I showed you, but here's how you can drill down deeper. Because people, when they publish their events online, they do things, they actually use different language. So some people might publish their event as a seminar, a workshop, a meeting, conference, convention, retreat, mastermind, teleclass, on and on. They're using different language. So if we go to Google search, we actually want to use our keyword phrase and then tag on these different events because we're going to get different searches showing up on page one of Google just by trying these different searches. Okay, that's all I need to show there. Just again, showing you options to drill a little bit deeper. As I mentioned, online news publications are very powerful. So I already showed you how to do this. The only difference is now when you go to Amazon and Barnes and Noble, click on the links that say magazine subscriptions or Kindle newsstand at Amazon and at Barnes and Noble, click on newsstand or magazines. Those are the buttons, the links to go to because it will give you a listing of all those online magazines, publications that you could very well be showcased in. And then on the Google search tool, all you do is continue to use your keyword phrase and add things like search terms like online news, online publications, 
online magazines, and that's going to bring up all of these news publications that, again, are often almost always looking for guest experts, either guest experts to interview or guest experts to share content. So an example in the business finance and marketing niches would be companies like Adweek, Bloomberg, Business Week, Entrepreneur, Fast Company. These are all powerful online publications that we want to target. Okay, we're winding down, but I just want to mention that when you're looking at a product service search, we're only doing it for the purpose of our call to action. Now think about it, at the end of your messaging, you probably, the, the host will likely say, where can people get more information? This is often an opportunity for you to build your list or to sell something, potentially. But here's the thing, make sure that you're targeting your products and services to the message of the interview. If you didn't target it, if you don't target that, you're gonna get people going, huh? They're, they're gonna be confused. So you can go again to Amazon and Barnes and Noble to find out what are the hottest products and services that are being offered. And you simply use search terms there by searching for your keyword phrase, book, courses, membership, podcast, video, and so on. I need you to think about what would be my offer at the end of the interview. Where would I send them? Would I send them to a landing page? Would I send them to a free download? Uh, I, I, or send them to another person's product with an affiliate link? Whatever it is, I need you to think about that at this point. Okay, now as you, uh, over the next week, go down the rabbit hole, which you are going to go, uh, I want you to realize that you're going to come across a lot of great information as you're clicking through that don't fit in any of the columns, but it's also very valuable that you're going to want to capture. And this could be anything uh, su such as top 10 lists, like all those lists we came across, they could actually be placed in that last column, the target resource, and Wikipedia, checklists, product research, bios. Bios are great if you come across videos of documentaries, have somebody's photo galleries. This is all great stuff that later on we want to have all on that one sheet. So it's at it's at uh, fingertip away from getting that access to that information. Remember, this this research is a one time deal in the beginning, and then later on we just continue to refine it. We continue to work this list. Okay, so that's it. We've been cranking through this information. So I just want to summarize what we just did. In this first week, remember, we got to keep it focused on market research specifically for the purpose of research to confirm a target audience, a target market, a target topic. And at this point, we should have a number of target influencers that we have compiled in preparation to showcase our message, which we're gonna cover next week, all about preparing the message. So here we're gonna look at scripting and storyboarding and getting that message tight for the purpose of a media interview. So later we can reach out to these target media publications, including the blogs, the podcasts, the online magazines, and then, I mean, right now, uh, it's time to go to work. <laughs> it's it, if at this point it's like you have a lot of homework before next week. But remember, I want to I want to emphasize: if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you feel overwhelmed at any stage of the process, remember what William said: it, a fifth grader, if a fifth grader can do a search on Google to locate on the front page, using a search term, locate on the front page, a valuable piece of information that you need to capture and add to your spreadsheet. That's all you need to do. Now, whether that's one piece of information or whether that's an entire page that you wanna fill up, it's up to you. Work at the comfort level that you wanna work at. Make it relevant to you, make it relevant to your situation, and make sure that you enjoy the process. Communicate with us at any point. Remember, you have access to the Q&A, so continue to ask your questions through the landing page, the webinar, the web workshop landing page. You'll have access to that. Go ahead and ask your questions, and we will be sure that as we progress over the next few weeks that we are handling all your questions and all your concerns 
We want you to grow. And next week, we cover media preparation. If you have not yet registered, be sure you go to the link and register for that. So that's a separate event that you'll need to register for next week, week two, stage two, media preparation, where we're gonna show you actually how to script your content, storyboard it, and nail it so, so focused, your story. So we get your title down, but we're gonna get your story so focused so that it's broken down into sound bites. So from that point on, you're gonna be able to go out with confidence and start to, uh, actually, let me back up. You're not gonna be confident yet. You're gonna be confident after we do weeks three and four. But it's the first, it's the next step before we actually put you on camera to start practicing and start uh, doing a presentation, an on-camera presentation. You're gonna to have to have your messaging down. So we're all gonna do that all next week. So until next time, thank you, enjoy, have fun, and we're going to stop this recording now, and I will bring everybody up because I want to see if we have any faces left. Thank you so much.